Welcome to another very lovely day. Today is Sunday, and I think it's fitting for my first AMA, so I'm calling it the Sunday AMA. I know it's cheesy, but uh, who cares? It's my name. Um, I am not in my Aston Martin uh, because that has a crack in the windshield, and it's uh, it's, it's sort of bumming me out. And uh, also, I haven't received the title for it yet because um, it has it's on its way from uh, from Mr. Doug Demiro. So I'm just waiting for that to uh, to actually be able to drive the car. But I am in my ultimate daily driver, the uh, Mercedes S500, that I will be doing a lot of um, modifications and uh, repairs on. So that's coming up. But I figured I'd answer a few questions that uh, you guys had for me. So without further ado, here's some... Uh, let's start off with some questions from Twitter. All right, our first question is uh, from Serg Sal, uh, at Serg Sal 88 um, As a fellow Central Florida resident, can I check out the Aston Martin? Uh, yeah, I think I will be doing uh, some meetups. Um, I think a lot of people want to check out the car. Um, and I, I want to meet, you know, uh, I, I want to meet some new people in, in Florida. I don't really know anybody. So I think uh, I can kill two birds with one stone. Uh, let's see. From Sparky, at Spark, S-P-A-R-C-C-C. Uh, question, why use a PETA slash Tavares instead of Freddy? Do they have some special meaning? Uh, a PETA is a, uh, an acronym. It means Automotive Performance Index Database and Answers. It's a website idea that uh, I had and I'm still sort of cultivating uh, in my spare time. And it's going to be like a knowledge hub for, for uh, people that want to modify and repair their cars. Uh, that's a separate idea. That's, that's sort of just a, a brand. I want to build up some brand recognition. Um, I'm not sure I'm doing it in the right way because I should be more focused on it, but it, it's it's just a side project that has been for years. Uh, Tavarish means uh, it means like comrade or friend in Russian. I'm I'm originally from Russia, and uh, it it was a screen name that I used. Um, I, I came up with when I was like 12, so it just stuck. I, I was uh, Tavarish in every single one of my uh, online forums, so that's that's sort of you know. Where, where the moniker came from. All right, question from R-X-I-S-T-K-J. So Rixistigaj, Rix all right, whatever. Um, questions for your next video. Where did you learn to work on cars? How does your wife feel about your passion for cars? So um, I learned to work on cars just by myself. Um, my very first car was a 1998 Nissan Maxima GLE, and uh, the very first thing I did on that car was uh, its taillights, and that took me to change taillights. It took me like two and a half hours because I couldn't figure out how to uh, take off the, uh, the the glue uh, behind it. So yeah, from there I just started taking apart my car, putting it back together again, breaking stuff in the process. Um, it's it's just kind of the school of hard knocks, self-taught. Uh, I went on YouTube. I went on. Um, online forums. Actually, this was before YouTube was a thing. So uh, I went on, um, just Googled stuff. Um, I, I learned from forums. Forums are, are, are your best friend when you're trying to learn a, a car platform. And how does my wife feel about my passion for cars? She's, she's fine with it. She, uh, she likes it. Well, I mean, she's not really a car person, but um, she, she tolerates it as, as, best, uh, as best a wife can. I mean, I have now, what, six cars? And uh, she's totally fine with it. It doesn't it doesn't interfere with anything, and it actually brings uh, a lot of uh, value into into our lives. Where does the name Tavares come from? Where do you work other than Jalopnik? So where does your name uh, where does the name Tavares come from? I think I already uh, said that. Um, it it means comrade or friend in Russian. And uh, where do you work other than Jalopnik? I have a few um, a few of my own businesses. I own a few websites. Uh, so that's where I work. I don't really want to disclose what uh, what other websites um, I run uh, right now. Um, I'll, I'll do that maybe in a later video, but uh, that's basically where my, you know, where I get my money for uh, doing all this uh, all this car stuff. Okay, at uh, dictator under slash Durka. Uh, hey, what happened to the 944 Turbo in Jersey? Are you selling it or shipping it or is it staying there? So I'm definitely picking it up. Um, I don't want to ship it because the cars that I shipped recently got messed up and that 944 Turbo needs a complete restoration. I don't like when I have to ship cars and they need special rules. So it's like, well, the e-brake doesn't work and you can't leave it running for more than five minutes or else it overheats or something like that. I don't want a car with special rules. So... I'm going to 
take a truck there. I think that's why I wanted you guys to give me uh, ideas for a pickup truck. I'm going to uh, buy a pickup truck, hopefully, if I don't get a, like a press truck or something. I'm going to uh, buy a pickup truck, get a U-Haul uh, car carrier, bring it here. It's going to be a lot of driving, but uh, hopefully I can pick it up myself. And that's getting a full, like, top to bottom restoration because that's an original 47,000 mile car. And yeah, I, I, I think it deserves it. It's, uh, it's a 944 Turbo. I love those cars and I can't wait to drive it. At X-A-M-I-D-O-V-C. So, uh, Xamidovic. Amir Hamidovic. Hamidovic. Um, are you planning to buy some junk car and build it into a race car or maybe a show car? So, the junk car I have now is probably the Lexus, the, the 92 Lexus. So, that's going to be a, uh, a build. It's going to be a race-inspired build. Um, there are a lot of racetracks in Florida. And in Florida, you can pretty much drive whatever you want. So, this is going to be a testament to that. It's going to be something that uh, I can drive on the track. Um, I don't think it's going to be a drift car. Uh, it might turn into that, but I, I don't want it beca because a lot of different channels have different uh, have drift missile projects, and I don't, you know, those cars get beat up, and, and this car is sort of special. I mean, it has a sentimental value for, for myself, and I will sell it on, so I don't want to just sell somebody a crumpled piece of paper, you know? I want to uh, give them something of value, so I want to make this into a, maybe like a circuit track racer, uh, something like that, something that you haven't seen with this platform. Mark Longoria, at Mark underscore, whatever. Uh, Mark Longoria from Twitter asks, um, what are the most frustrating repair jobs you have ever attempted and what were your biggest goofs? So I used to do a lot of uh, repair work for, uh, for online forums, namely the Maxima forums. And the fr most frustrating repair job uh, I ever did was, I did an engine swap on a 2004 Nissan Maxima. And uh, yeah, apparently the engine blew, and uh, the guy had an engine shipped to my house. I mean, this is this is some some wild shit. Like I, I was pretty much I was running a repair shop from my garage, and the guy shipped uh, an engine to my house. He he shipped his car. He um, yeah, he literally shipped his car from uh, from Virginia, and I did it for some some small amount of money. It was like five hundred bucks or something or six hundred dollars, and he had an automatic car. Uh, I buttoned everything up. Everything was everything was great. Uh, turned the key and nothing. Nothing happened. The the car w the the engine wouldn't turn. I tried to turn it with a breaker bar. It wouldn't turn. Turns out um, I didn't know that the torque converter uh, torque converter is uh, is basically this this big uh, bagel looking thing. Uh, it's sort of like a clutch, um, like a rudimentary like a t if if you understand how a clutch works. It's it's um, between the engine and transmission. So this controls uh, the pressure that goes into the transmission. And um, yeah, so that has to go on the uh, input shaft of the transmission. I clicked it in. I didn't know I had to click in twice. So you click it in, spin it, and then click in again. So what happened was it, um, it clicked in once. I was like, oh, okay, that's good. Bolted everything back on, and it was binding. Uh, I just wouldn't, let, wouldn't allow the engine to turn. So I had to do, uh, the guy was on his way down to, to New Jersey um, and I told him the car was done and yeah, the, the car wasn't, wasn't starting. So I had to take off the transmission and basically do this in, in the rain. Uh, my friends came over, they said I looked like a wet dog. I took off the transmission, clicked it in one more time. Uh, you know, fingers crossed, like the, the oil pump Usually what happens when you when you do that is the oil pump uh, shatters or the oil pump cracks and that you just need a new transmission for. But uh, thankfully nothing was wrong with this. So uh, I, I put it back on, everything went on fine and uh, the car ran great. So yeah, that took one more day and, and it was just a complete nightmare. Cause I didn't have, I don't have air tools. I didn't have uh, a lift, anything like that. It, this was basically in my parents' driveway that I'm just changing the transmission and it's pouring rain. Uh, so I think that's my uh, most frustrating repair job. And, and biggest goof, I mean, biggest goof is just me buying uh, these these crappy cars and attempting to, to resell them. I mean, I, I bought a an 03 Cadillac CTS, and that engine, the timing belt went. So I changed the timing belt and the head. And then 
everything everything was running but then um, the oil pump went and after you know 20 seconds of running it I seized the engine and I lost you know lost a good thousand dollars so that was a that was a pretty big goof at Keter something Keter 24 uh, is your wife ever going to have an appearance or work with you on a project and I don't think so she's not really a camera person um, she's not she doesn't really work on cars you know she's um, she's she's sort of behind the scenes um, all right I think I do have some some other questions but I think um, I will leave those for next time so I'm gonna go to email and uh, yeah let's let's uh, let's check those out all right the first question on email is from uh, Maplewood SP um, Dude, you seem to be doing very well, and it's not due to driving a $3,000 Mercedes, uh, which I'm in right now. So, why don't you share your money-making secrets? Cheers. Uh, I don't have any money-making secrets, it's just you work hard. Uh, you work hard, um, and you see a... Like, I, I'm... I, I guess I'd ca call myself an entrepreneur, uh, and I would guess I'd, you know, I own a few businesses. So, there's no secret... Um, it's just you, you wake up, I don't have a concept of a work day. So I wake up, um, get to work. And when I finish work, that's when I go to sleep. That's basically what it is. Uh, you, you find, um, a need in the market and then you fulfill that need. So if somebody needs, um, let, let's say automotive journalism, right? Uh, let's, uh, let's say that there's a need for a certain type of, of car review, a certain type of uh, writing uh, that hasn't been established yet. That's what you should do, you know? Um, something that you can be passionate about, something you, you can do every day, and you do it even though you're not being paid to do it. So that's that's sort of how you uh, you should run a business. But um, yeah, again, there's, there's, no, there's no secrets. I'm, I'm not not being subsidized by my parents. I haven't won the lottery. Um, I don't have some trust fund. And uh, we, you know, my, my family was, we grew up with, well, I grew up with in, uh, in sort of meager means. We, we came to this country with, with not a lot of money uh, at all. Um, and now it's, you know, my family's living comfortably. Uh, I'm living uh, extremely comfortably uh, with all these uh, crap cars and, and my old Aston Martin. But yeah, there's, a, there's not really a secret. Brian Knight asked, as a fairly new subscriber, I was wondering how do you support yourself? Not trying to get in your pockets, but always wondering when I see YouTubers with a smaller but growing channel. Uh, I support myself just, I, I, I'm getting a lot of these questions. Uh, what do I do for a living? Maybe I should do a, a video specifically addressing that, but I don't think it really, really needs its own video. Uh, you just work hard. Nothing I own is, is some extravagant, uh, expense. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a shmi yet. Uh, I'm not a. Um, you know, some of these other YouTubers are like, I just bought a Bugatti Huayra. Wow. Like, no, I, I bought. You know, I, I bought an Aston Martin that is that has a ton of miles on it, and it's the price of a Toyota Camry. Um, my Lexus that I'm staring at right now, uh, I bought that for twenty nine hundred bucks. The Lexus in front of it, the graffiti one, I bought it for four hundred dollars when I was twenty. Bought this for three three thousand dollars. I don't. I don't buy anything. Uh, very expensive. The house was a great deal, uh, and you know my lifestyle in that I work from home allows me to, to move anywhere. So I'm I'm sort of off the beaten path, and uh, yeah, it's just you have to find um, bargains where they where they are. So I, I don't buy anything new. I don't finance anything. Uh, everything's uh, everything's with cash. So yeah, that's uh, that's basically that. From NA. NFA5511. Um, what do you do for a main source? Uh, okay, that, that's one. Uh, what does your wife do? My wife helps me. Uh, my wife is, uh, she's basically, uh, she's not an assistant, she's more like a manager. So she helps me um, set goals, reach, uh, reach those goals, and we work together as a team. Uh, so she, she keeps me on track. I'm, I'm not really good with time management, so I'm trying, you know, to, she's, uh, as corny as it sounds, she's, a, she's a, like the yin to my yang. She compliments my personality. So uh, I, get, uh, I get work done. She keeps me on track. What's a brand new car that's realistic that you would like, but a, 20, but, but a 2016 to 2017 model like if you could lease? I'm not really understanding what that question means. But 
uh, a brand new car that's realistic that you would like. I don't know what's realistic, but um, a brand new car that I would absolutely buy if I had the money would be a Mercedes AMG GTS. Uh, that car is damn near perfect. Uh, I've never driven it. I've driven the C63 AMG, uh, which has a very similar drivetrain, but uh, yeah, I am in love with that car. That car looks absolutely amazing. It sounds phenomenal. It's fast as hell. Uh, the transmission's great. The interior is gorgeous. That car is awesome. Hey, Travish. Uh, this is from uh, Nick RT Banny. Um, I've been looking for the perfect daily driver for the better part of a year, and I'm stuck on two cars. Um, now, seeing as you're much more trained um, in the used car arts, I figured you could help. I'm stuck between a first, second gen Mini Cooper John Works. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Or a VW B5 Passat W8 manual wagon four motion. <laughs> okay, both cars have, have higher mileage but are below 100,000 miles. W8 sounds amazing and has Autobahn killing hammer. The Mini, mini is funky autocross monster. And if you know anything about W8, they're extremely rare, especially in manual wagon form, but minis are cool handling machines and so much room for mods. If you have any suggestions, you can throw them in. I'm not worried about maintenance. I kept a 2001 Jetta Turbo alive for 180,000 miles, so I know the pain of German made. Honestly, I mean, even if you had a Jetta Turbo, which is probably 1.8T, that is nothing in comparison to a W8 four motion manual uh passat because there's no room for anything for, for you to put your hands in there uh in the engine bay i used to have uh, an audi uh, 2.7 t uh, a6 and that thing was a nightmare to work on i mean the the engine was great the engineering was great to work on it was absolutely a pain in the ass i'd probably get the mini uh the the, the jcw minis are, are very good especially older ones they're great value but uh, they suffer from the same kind of uh, BMW uh, build quality. But that's nothing in comparison to the headache you will get with a W8 manual wagon four motion. Sure, it's rare, but I don't know if I'd go for that. Uh, this is the, he's looking for the perfect daily. So JCW Mini would probably fit that bill very, very well. Uh, the answer is all, also always Miata, so uh, maybe you should look into an MX-5 um, Miata that that would also fit the bill very well it's not exactly the most practical daily uh the jcw would be be a little bit better but uh, it would be way better than the, the b5 passat w8 manual wagon this is from ross mcfaden hey man massive fan of the channel thank you very much ross i'm currently doing a mechanic course in college just now and was wondering if you can give me any helpful tips um okay uh helpful tips is um the number one thing you want to do when, when working on a car is know how to solve problems. And not just uh, not just problems like, uh, oh, I'll look in the manual, because the manual is helpful, but sometimes uh, stuff happens where you have to just use your head. So have that problem solving ability. Um, if you don't have it, then, then just um, kind of learn how, how, uh, how a flowchart works and then just go down the list. Um, if you're already doing this as a as a passion then then that's good however if you're doing this as a job as a career then it might get a little bit grating it might get you might have dread doing it and that's how people kind of fall out of love with it so uh make sure you stay grounded make sure that you um appreciate it for what it is make sure you do it you know do it in your spare time make sure it's something that you want to do um that you do without anybody having to pay you for it so that's that's why I, lo I love doing it. You know, I don't really get paid for this other than, you know, YouTube channel and the occasional Jalopnik article. Um, I, I love doing this on my own. All right, our next question comes from Darius Benson. This is a long one, and uh, I don't really want to read the entire thing. Uh, it's a bit rambly, but um, the actual question says, I guess I'm wondering if you would be willing to work on my car if I were to drive down to Florida. Uh, Darius, it's... Um, uh, I, I love working on um, working with other people on stuff, but uh, I don't have the time. It, it's just something where seven days a week, I, I'm, I'm really like my, my schedule is, is just kind of nuts. So probably not. I mean, but here's the thing. What you can do is uh, you can go on local forums for your specific car. And yeah, and, and you, there's plenty of people that will be willing to work on cars. They, they have a lot of knowledge in that specific platform. So I would start there. Okay, here's another question. He says, um, 
It's from uh, Kirill. Uh, Kirill? Kirill? Hello from cold Russia. Life sucks and, uh, and loves to kick you in the hardest moment. I'm curious what moment in your life was worst and hardest and how you dealt with it. Love your content, wish you good luck, and stay as cool as you are now and even cooler. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, um, life sucks, uh, and what, what was your hardest moment? Um, I've, I've been pretty, uh, I, I mean, I guess it's human nature not to uh, notice the, the hard moments or, or you, jeez. I guess it's human nature not to uh, dwell on, on the, the bad stuff in life. And I, I'm not sure, I don't even think I can, I can name something uh, like my, my hardest moment. Um, maybe my early 20s when uh, I really wasn't making any money. I was, uh, I was working really, really uh, long hours. Um, I was with a, a friend in his business and um, you know, I had this vision for the business and to you know to take off after a certain amount of years and that never happened and i was basically you know making i don't know like five to ten thousand dollars a year i just got married which which might not which might not have been the best idea as far as um economically but yeah i, I was in a rough space just because uh as a man um i, I don't want to <laughs> i actually I, I hate that phrase as a whatever uh, me, uh, just me. I had I had a sense of uh, I need to kind of get my shit together, and it, it really wasn't clicking for me at all. So I I did what any person that was desperate for for money would do. Um, not not necessarily desperate for money, but desperate for uh, a sense of purpose. I started trying everything, and uh, I tried everything I could, uh, and eventually some of the things start. You know, some of the projects that I took on uh, took off. So I think the hardest days were were just when you didn't have any money, and I was you know mid twenty something and no prospects, just living at home, and uh, y you know life sort of breathing down your neck, uh, telling you to get your shit together. That that's that's sort of the hardest thing. Um, I know that it was hard when my parents first came here. Like uh, we came here in uh, 1990. That was right before the Soviet Union collapsed. So we, we were originally from uh, from Russia, and that was uh, particularly hard just because like that that was that was true hardship that was um you know no money i don't even know where we're going to eat um uh, you know this month so we need you know 20 or 40 bucks to, to tide us over until until the next month we'll just get uh, you know whatever cheap food that we can in uh, in the supermarket but um thankfully everything has has worked out in that respect and i've been extremely uh, fortunate, and uh, I'm not going to say lucky because there's a lot of hard work involved, and my parents worked their asses off. But uh, I've been extremely fortunate to, to kind of bear the fruit of that and uh, uh, take that to the next level. So yeah, that's uh, that's that. All right, here is from uh, M Baddy Three. Uh, hello, Tavares. I'm a new subscriber, and I really enjoy your channel. Thank you very much. Uh, I bought an Audi 2007 Quattro convertible, and I started having issues. 76,000 miles. Uh, like the top doesn't open and a transmission issue doesn't shift from second to Okay, first to second unless I use manual and when I try to trade it in they wanted to give me 3,000 for it My question is do you know if fixing the top motor or module is worth worth it to keep is worth it and to keep it or question mark question mark question mark mo All right, mo um, So I assume that you have an Audi a4 because uh, that's basically what uh, 2007 Quattro convertible. I think I think it's safe to say that it's an Audi A4. Um, those cars are uh, mechanically not not the most reliable uh, cars in the world, but um, it all depends on what you want. 76,000 miles isn't a lot of miles for that car, and the transmission issue is quite common uh, with the Chiptronic transmission. So I would get that taken care of. It's it'll cost you maybe 1,500 bucks, and then uh, you know fix the top and you'll have a, a decent car. That car, the, the engine is uh, pretty stout as long as you take care of it. Um, the repair can be a little more than, uh, than you're comfortable with, but I think, I think it should be an okay car. I don't think you should really trade it in for anything, unless it's what you want to do, unless you're tired of the car, and uh, it all depends on your personal preference. So it's a fine car. It's a, it's a decent car, um, and, you know, I, 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 don't know, I don't know why you would... Um, 
trade it in for anything else if those are the only issues. And transmission issues is kind of a kind of a <laughs> funny thing. An Audi A4 convertible just drove by, so uh, maybe that's you. <laughs> maybe that's you. Uh, it, you know, it didn't look too jerky, but uh, speak of the devil. Yeah, uh, I'd keep the car, just work on it, and um, try to get a good price from an independent mechanic. All right, last question, because I think we've done this um, long enough. Uh, this is from Oswaldo Portillo. Oswaldo asks, what was the first car you worked on, and what did you do to it? And or what's the most interesting car that you've worked on, and the most interesting thing you've done to one? Um, okay, so the first car I worked on was my 98 Nissan Maxima GLE, and what did I do to it? I did a 3.5 uh, engine swap from a uh, newer Maxima, which is basically it's very similar to a 350Z block. Um, I did a five-speed manual swap. I did suspension. I did exhaust. I, like everything on that car, uh, that a uh, young, well, uh, a, a kid in his late teens, early twenties would do with no money. That's what I did. So I had way more time than money. So I did as much as I could to the car, and I had to. Oh God, Facebook messages. Um, and I had to uh, sort of make it my own. I had to make my uh, stamp on uh, on the world. The most interesting car that I've worked on, mm, I don't know. I mean, probably probably the Aston Martin. But the Aston Martin, I haven't worked on it at all. Uh, mainly because that's that's the only like exotic uh, I've ever touched. Um, I think I, I've probably worked on something else, like maybe you know G thirty sevens and stuff like that. But those really aren't that interesting. Uh, the Aston Martin is probably the, the, the most interesting thing that I've worked on, at least that I've owned. Uh, I've done um, engine swaps on lots of cars. I've done, um, I've owned cars. I've owned BMW M5s, M3s. Uh, I've had the, the bigger version of this car. I've had the Mercedes S600, which was a V12 twin turbo. I worked on that. That was also kind of interesting, but uh, I think the Aston Martin pretty much tops the list. Uh, so I think that's going to be it. I do have... Um, I do have other questions, but I think I'll get to them maybe in a later segment, uh, in a later video. This has been uh, really, really fun. I appreciate every single one of you guys. At the time of this recording, I have almost 18,000 subscribers, which is a, a, a just kind of a mind-blowing figure for me. Uh, so if you want to send me more questions, and I really, really want you to send me more questions, uh, you can tweet me at Apita Online, or you can... Um, email me at asktavarish at gmail.com. And I think we'll do this every week. I think we can do this uh, pretty regularly. It's it's fun for me. I like talking to you guys. And uh, I want you guys to have a you know a little bit more value uh, for, for what it is I do. I'm going to try to you know have these out uh, maybe every day, maybe every two days, something like that. Uh, we'll see what the schedule is like. But uh, thank you very much. Um, this was a lot of fun. So as always... Uh, like, comment, subscribe if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video, dislike button's right there. Nobody's stopping you. Um, I will be uh, working on cars this entire week. And I'm still waiting on a lot of parts. Uh, for this car, I'm still waiting on uh, the crank pulley I have to do. And uh, I'm in the process of buying the vinyl wrap and the wheels and tires for this car. And then we will be putting on the exhaust, the body kit, doing body work. There's a lot of, a lot of work to do. Then we have to do work on the cars in front of me, which is the Lexus SE400 and the Lexus SE300. In the middle of that, I'll be working on the Aston Martin inside my garage. So plenty of work to do and uh, lots to look forward to, but um, I'll leave you with that. And uh, this is me saying goodbye.